am the toughest guy around. It didn't matter if he was covered with blood. They had to knock him out to win. We could hear the ballroom where the fights were being held. That sounded like thunder rolling. I was a bad mother. He was the kind of guy that you'd have to shoot him to get him to stop. The MMA was born right then. Hello, everybody on the internet and in studio. I'm Lee Blickley. I am here with the creators of a new documentary on Showtime called Tough Guys. We have Will Zulo, Henry Roosevelt, Craig Tobias, and Jamie Crowder. So guys, this is a really big deal for me. I'm not sure if everyone knows, nobody knows, but this is my husband right here, Will Zulo. Hello. Yeah. We know, we know. Is this a conflict of interest or something? Probably. Yeah, maybe. Um, but you know, I'm here to talk about the film. I'm super excited about it. You guys should be too. Um, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. How did you guys come up with the idea of making this documentary? Okay, so uh, like three years ago, uh, my brother uh, was a reporter for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. He found this crazy poster. He was walking through the Heinz History Center there, and it was uh, this poster with these just tough dudes on it, and it was held at a Holiday Inn. And uh, they, they were like, he called me up on the phone, and he said, Dude, we got to do this story. Um, so what I did was I, I went to the you know the best person I knew, second best person here, but uh, Craig, Craig, and I, I we were working on a we were working on a ESPN 30 for 30 at the time, and uh, I just said I, I printed out the poster and I brought it to him and I said, dude, we have to do this. This is amazing. I mean, these dudes fought in a Holiday Inn ballroom, and so from there we just we're, we're like, this is an amazing story and it's very timely as well. So. So your brother Bob, he is like the uh, story right, kind of discovered the story to begin with. Um, and then how did Henry kind of get involved? Because you guys co-direct this. Well, me and Henry are like best buddies. We, uh, you know, grew up, we worked on each other's films. And it was like, he has like such a knack for like just being very visually unique. And so I just thought between the two of us, it was going to be a lot of work. And we're just like, let's, let's kill this. Uh, we uh, we met at a very pretentious, uh, <laughs> prestigious boarding school, actually, outside of Princeton, New Jersey. It's all been downhill from then. <clears throat> yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> I think we were the only ones that took sort of a, a creative path because um, we weren't really smart enough to be there. Um, uh, but, yeah, and then uh, you barely would get me a PA job uh, in New York, and I kept begging them. But, yeah, we, we both... You know, grew up on big sets, Law and Order, 30 Rock, a bunch of stuff, and getting people Diet Cokes, and, you know, the easiest way in actually seemed like a documentary. And Tough Guys, the origins of MMA, it was just like a no-brainer. Steel workers versus motorcycle gang members, it was just, it was, it was just crazy. It seemed too, too crazy to be real. And so, Craig, what kind of brought you into the story? What was it about this origins of MMA fighting that really got you on board as a producer? Yeah, I mean, for me, it, you know, when Will first threw this poster in front of me when we were working on a job, MMA was really kind of going to the mainstream. Ronda Rousey was becoming this household name, and that was a big part of it, knowing that we could hit a mainstream audience with it. But also, for me, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and my grandfather, he worked in a factory, and I'd see these images on these posters and all this stuff, and it reminded me of my family. And I, and I had no idea any of this went on in the early 1980s in Pittsburgh. So for me, it was two part. One, I really felt confident from the beginning, and I mean, day one, we talked about it, I was like, I could see this on Showtime. Like, that was from day one. Um, so that was always exciting. And then the second part of it was really just kind of uh, investigating this history of where I grew up that I knew nothing about. Yeah. So how did you guys go about getting all the guys, tracking them down? Um, because all these guys, it was kind of the, you know, the 70s and 80s. Like you said, they were all different occupations fighting in a Holiday Inn. Um, was it hard to track them down for interviews? Uh, a little bit. There are a bunch of weirdos we interviewed. So I was like... <laughs> Uh, That's kind of weird. Like though. Henry could talk about it. Some of them were like living in woods, but in the woods. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's like uh, Bill, who is one of our main subjects, was really big in tracking them down, as well as Bob, my brother. He was a story producer. But Henry could tell a story about going into the woods and interviewing <laughs> these dudes. Yeah, tracking them down was a journey in itself. Again, uh, one guy, uh, Max, 
Um, he got out of prison for something totally unrelated and uh, was living in an RV in the middle of the woods, so finding him was a challenge. Uh, one, a couple guys on the panhandles of, of, of Florida, a guy named Apache Dan Carr, who claims to have created uh, American Gladiators, which is another story that we can get into. Uh, you know, is, he has like five pit bulls and uh, just... He you know, runs a wrestling academy. Yeah, he runs a wrestling uh, academy in a strip mall in Orlando, uh, training like the future WWE stars. Um, and he's a legend and a character in himself. So uh, going up to Erie, Pennsylvania to find Mad Dog Moyak, uh, who basically hangs out at a, a little bar called Scooters, a biker bar, where it's, uh, you know, characters in themselves, the Lower East Side Federation, as they're known. Uh, uh, what do they call them? They're, they're not a gang. Uh, they're, uh, they're for the youth. They're a youth organization. <laughs> yes, they're a youth organization. They've rebranded pretty hard. Yeah. So. so, Jamie, you're a fighter yourself, and, and you train others, correct? Jamie uh, actually yeah, yeah. played Mad Dog in our film, by the way. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's correct, yeah. Uh, so did you, have you heard of the story before, and did you know of some of these fighters down in Pittsburgh? No, definitely not, no. <laughs> and, like, you know, it's like... I'm an immigrant to this country myself, so I yeah, struggled and made me way to do some things. And when I heard about the story, uh, I was very interested to find out more because it's just it's what I do personally. I teach Thai boxing, and I work in a very famous uh, academy. It's called the Henzo Gracie Academy, and there's a lot of professional fighters there, world champions, people who are famous in the, in the, this uh, game, in, in the fight game. So when I first heard about the story, and they were like, at the time, I had a huge beard. It's probably my second. We, we kind of crisis. stalked Jamie for the record <laughs> for like I don't know four or five days. Our our office that we work out of, we're on the twelfth floor, and the ground level floor is the Gracie Gym. And I don't know. Do you want to tell how we were trying to kind of fulfill some roles? And I mean, this guy? yeah, Mad Dog's very specific. Uh, look, massive beard. Um, he sort of looks like Charles Manson, I believe. Um, and at the time, yeah, your beard and your profile just fit it to the T. You looked like a psychopath. Yeah, what were, yeah. what were you doing What was I doing? I was just having a midlife crisis, I think. You know what I mean? I was just, I grew a big beard. And then I was just teaching. And then when you brought that uh, story to me. I mean, uh, if anyone's ever worked in a martial arts school or uh, been involved in this kind of uh, industry for a while, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but... Quite a few weirdos show up at your place, you know what I mean? Like, it's like people who want to learn to punch each other in the face, do stuff, you know, like that's, I mean, it, for me personally, it's one of the best things I've ever done with my life. It changed my life, changed a lot of people's lives. A real um, incredible transformation can take place. You get a lot of humility, a lot of honesty from martial arts, but, you know, like anything, I suppose, is strange characters yeah. do show up. So when there's initially these lads are like, <laughs> we want you to play this guy, he's got a big, beard and he's a maniac and he fights and it's about the origins of MMA. I'm like, well, I don't know about that. Like, <laughs> They have a big like glass panel and it was just like the three of us like against the glass like that's him. That's him. <laughs> we need to get him. So what we're talking about here is what they kind of reenacted um, what had happened in the past. So they cast Jamie to play Mad Dog and you guys, guys found some other actors to fill the, those yeah, other roles. What happened was uh, one of our main characters who was the promoter of these fight events, uh, Frank Caligiuri, he was like, yeah, we got all this footage, we got all this footage, and then it was like, oh, we need uh, footage of these specific fights, and he goes, uh, that was actually lost in a flood, and they're like the most important fights for our story, and so we're, we're kind of forced to, to just kind of shoot them because we couldn't tell this story without those fights, so that, that's why we casted Jamie, and we went up to John's boxing gym in the Bronx, and we just shot on a phantom camera, which is his awesome camera but uh it it was an intense couple of days yeah i mean it also opened up the door to tell a documentary in a sort of hybrid sense um so like personally i don't have a huge affinity for docs in general um if i'm being totally honest uh so you know we try to steer more towards commercial or uh narrative so the opportunity to uh uh, shoot phantom shoots with like a hundred extras in 1970s gear. It was like, oh hell yeah, let's let's fucking do that. So yeah, a lot of times after certain shoots, we we're like, are we making a documentary or what? What are we doing? So um, to credit both of these guys, you know, Will kind of always kept us on track with the story and really the integrity of it. And Henry was usually doing the exact opposite. <laughs> 
pushing the the visual of it. So we think we ended up finding a, a really nice balance with the film. And yeah, it plays a little bit different than your traditional documentary in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it about this movie you think that really will stand up with you know with the MMA fans and and what will they find interesting about it? Because there's a lot in here that many people don't know about uh, the story with Frank and and the coup. Well, I I think it's just kind of. Um, First off, these characters are just lovable. You're going to, like, kind of fall in love with all these dudes who are, you know, just unique in their own right. But it, it's kind of just a forgotten history. And, and these guys did this crazy, weird, amazing thing. And it's just getting them credit for something that is absolutely huge today. I mean, you see these guys now, and then you see, like, this multi-billion dollar industry. And the culmination of that was the McGregor-Mayweather uh, fight. And you're like, wow, these guys... It's kind of sad because they did miss the boat. You know, they right thing, wrong time. But it, it's kind of just telling their story of it. Yeah, they could be billionaires and they're not. Uh, they're on the outskirts of uh, Pittsburgh, you know, running their respective karate studios. Um, so, you know, it's, it's an underdog story for sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, everyone, I think, again, MMA is a hot button issue right now. Where did it start? You know, uh, and, you know, uh, we, we try to, it's, it's a very gray issue, and we try to uh, answer a very specific part about it, where we believe it started in Pittsburgh in 1979, in a Holiday Inn. Um, and, Craig, what kind of resonated with you, this story of, you know, men, like you said, you're from Pittsburgh, men who are struggling to make ends meet at times, and they saw these posters and said, I can make a few bucks if I go beat up another dude. Um, is that something that drew you in? And Well, I've never beat up another dude, just to be <laughs> clear. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I think it's just that the, the blue-collar story, again, so, you know, where I was raised was something that really resonated with me. And, you know, at the beginning, when we did dive in and started doing our interviews, we... Our process was that the two main gentlemen that started this whole league uh, named Bill and Frank, we started our process doing, you know, very broad interviews with them to kind of get an idea of what the story really was. And from them, we started hearing about all these other characters. And I mean, the first after the first couple of weeks of filming, we sort of struggled in the sense that we knew we wanted to do a feature documentary. But at the same time, we thought for a moment, do we just do like an eight part series of just each character? Because each person um, each fighter in the film has an extraordinary backstory, so maybe we do that next. But you know, you started talking to. I remember one of our first weeks, we scheduled like three or four fighters in one day, and then during the first interview, it's like four hours later. We're like, oh, that interview went a lot longer. And these guys, you know, like anyone else, they they do feel like they missed the boat, and this is really their opportunity to tell their story of what how everything happened. You know, back in the early '80s. You guys were able to tell the story on such a big scale because of the producers that hopped on board. Um, if you guys want to talk about, um, I'm sure some of these people recognize the names of uh, some of the men who, who joined up and, and backed up this film. Uh, Morgan Spurlock uh, of Super Size Me fame uh, and uh, Oscar winner Ross Kaufman, who did Born Into Brothels. Uh, who They really, really helped us shape... Uh, shape the story because this is our first film like this is we had no idea what we were doing like in the beginning uh so to have this sort of guidance of somebody like th those two gentlemen it's like oh hell yeah you know i'm just thinking back to when it was kind of funny in the, early on in our process we'd be on the phone and we're like oh we're talking to an oscar winner right now ross kaufman <laughs> and ross would give us all these comments and we get off the phone and be like what the hell is he talking about we're like this guy has no idea he knows nothing <laughs> And then three weeks later in our editing process, we were like, oh, that's what he meant he three was weeks right. ago. He was, it was amazing. He was, he was right every single time. And he made, I think, a story that we did a very good job telling. He just elevated it even more. So creatively, Ross and his team really helped us kind of get through the editorial process, which for us was a much larger scale than we were used to. We're all kind of uh, initially were from the commercial world. So we're used to working on a piece of content for 30 seconds, not an 80-minute you know, piece. And then, um, you know, as things developed, uh, we did learn that, you know, feature documentary, making one is not easy um, by any means. And I think we reached a point, um, you know, kind of towards the end, we were around like a fine cut of the film. And we knew we just sort of, 
you know, you have these peaks and valleys uh, working on a film, and we knew we needed, like, one more push to kind of get us across the finish line. And um, that was Morgan and um, his producer, Rachel. They were awesome to just kind of, you know, really help us with the business part of getting a film out there and getting it seen to a larger audience. So, um, yeah, everyone really served specific roles to get the film to, to where it is. Yeah. And as independent filmmakers, what did it mean to you to to have your project backed by somebody like Morgan Spurlock? And is it has it set in yet that you guys are going to be on Showtime tomorrow night? Not really. Like the other night, I was just like had Showtime on and they're running like the promos for it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like even being here, like how many famous butts have sat in this seat and we're just here and maybe this is it, you know? Maybe this is it, but this is super, super fucking cool. We can't even play it down. It's just really cool. Yeah. Just to we're just excited that people will be able to see it. And, you know, good or bad, we're excited for feedback and just sharing it with the world. Yeah. Actually, no on feedback. Like, the movie's done, right? So <laughs> No feedback. Yeah, we're not going to read it. Just shelve it. Um, no, but, it, and it, again, when it comes to documentary, or when it comes to documentary filmmaking, uh, you can either make an escapist piece or you can make something that, uh, addresses some social injustice or that'll change the world. Uh, our, for the first 75% of our movie, it's about a bunch of guys in their 70s reminiscing about how they love to punch each other in the face. Um, so in, in the last 25% uh, I would say is sort of the consequences of that. Um, but yeah, this is, this is not like, this might not change the world, uh, but it's a damn good story. Yeah. Really entertaining. Jamie, you were, I think you were down at AFI Docs where this movie premiered. Yeah, I went down there, yeah. Uh, when you saw it for the first time, what did you think? Uh, well, not being particularly expert at being a movie critic or anything, but just as a person in the public, I was uh, very, very surprised. I was like, I really didn't know what I was getting into. These lads are like, they walk into the academy and they're like, will you do this? And I was like, yeah, because it sounds ridiculous. So we go to the Bronx, we film some of the scenes and then the next thing they're very uh, always in touch with me like really being complimentary about the work that, that we did together and then I was just happy to be invited I was like yeah I've never done anything like that so well and that shoot was so funny because we're you know we're shooting with this phantom camera that Will talked about and you know when you shoot with this camera it shoots at a very high frame rate so it picks up any little detail so for fight sequences Jamie had to punch the guy in the face and I remember you were like, so how hard do you want to punch him? We're like, I don't know, just punch him. So this poor guy, William, you hit, I don't know, I think we did the one take where his mouth guard goes flying out, what, I don't know, probably three times maybe, maybe four? Yeah, I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> <laughs> you hated it. What was it like to meet some of the guys, uh, so some of the guys came out to the premiere who are featured in this movie, and it was so cool to see them in the audience. What was it like for you as a fighter and then watching their story and then seeing them sitting there? That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, it was nice, actually. It felt like a, uh, like a full circle thing for me. I was like, after filming and then reading more about to find out more things and watching the actual film, which I was, I was quite blown away by, to be honest. I thought it was exceptional. And then afterwards, there was a, you know, we we went out, we all had drinks, we all spoke, and we're more in a social scene. So I made sure to speak to some of the characters in there. And yeah, I, it, it was quite moving for me, to be honest, because, you, you know, that's people's real lives. Mm -hmm. And thousands and maybe millions of people are going to see it, you know? So it's a very personal thing. And you, you can look at it as entertainment, but it's not entertainment for them. Yeah. Like, that's their real life. So, and I have a sense of it because that's what I've done for the last 15 years. I've been fighting, I've been in there, I know what it, that's like. Um, and so to do it back then as well, when there wasn't that kind of recognition that there is now, um, it's an interesting journey for those, those fellas, I'm sure. Yeah. And Craig, you mentioned before that every, everybody's story was so special in their own way. And then, uh, so will we see some sort of spin-off or some sort of um, you know, takeaway from this that could be maybe its own documentary? Yeah, we got a couple things going on. The dry erase board in the office is uh, a little bit overwhelmed with marker um, right now. But um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely potential for a spinoff with the characters themselves and focusing on them. And um, the one gentleman that Henry alluded to, uh, Dan Carr, um, as everyone will see tomorrow night, he is uh, he's he's a bit crazy. And, uh, you know, he has a, he's claimed that he started American Gladiators. Um, so it's a story we've started about a month and a half ago, um, just kind of hearing his broad ideas of, of what happened back uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. 
Um, so it's something we're kind of looking into uh, pursuing a bit more. So, yeah. And before I toss it off to these guys, um, what do you guys have in the pipeline and what's some of the stuff you're working on and, and are you excited for, you know, this, this is your first movie and it's making such a big showing. Um, maybe some doors will open for you. Maybe, <laughs> hopefully. Um, uh, narrative, narrative is always, I think, the push with every documentary filmmaker. Um, and then obviously Apache Dan Carr. Um, uh, uh, personally, I'm into blockchain. Uh, that's a separate note, but um, I, I digress right there. Uh, but yeah, I just there, a, a post-war film that um, I have. Uh, no, I was going to say you guys were being a bit modest. I mean, Will has a short film he shot, shot recently with uh, Louise Guzman and uh, Kevin Corrigan called The Duck. Um, Henry has like 18 different scripts he just throws on my desk every day, so I don't even know what to read anymore. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited for this. I mean, the goal when we started this a little over two years ago was always to use this as a stepping stone for other things. And I think we'll definitely stay in the documentary space. It was a pleasant surprise for us. And we're really excited about figuring out how to tell stories in a different way. So instead of you know your traditional documentaries, it's like how do you take these amazing stories and get them out to an audience? You know, and and we're all about, you know, a lot of documentaries are very specific in the market they're hitting. And this one we were excited about because it was more mainstream. So I think we'll kind of always gravitate to a subject where we know we have a lot larger audience that it can ultimately hit. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, ladies, I think you'll like this as well. Just because it says tough guys and it's about a bunch of dudes punching each other in the face, I swear. Like, I think you'll like it. At least our wives and girlfriends like it. I liked it. Yeah. It's great. There are some shirtless dudes, so I don't yes, know. Yes, many shirtless to dudes in the 70s. That's right up my alley. Uh, <laughs> let's go to some audience Q&A. So what I want to know, as an actual MMA reporter, did you guys plan it or was it just pure coincidence that the show's going to air with an actual UFC event in Pittsburgh. I wish we could sound really intelligent right now and act like we've been planning that. But uh, no, the, the timing of it was, there was a lot of things that sort of happened throughout the whole filmmaking process that were just, the next day we were like, how, how is this happening? Like for instance, one of the um, referees in the film, his son ended up being our editor, uh, Brock Bodell. And his father, Jack, is one of the main characters in the story. He was a ref and also a secret service for Jimmy Carter. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, no, it wasn't intentionally planned that we were, you know, premiering tomorrow night. And also there's a UFC fight in Pittsburgh. It just, it's one of these things that just happened to work out that way. Who's next? Hi. Uh, so I was wondering what about Pittsburgh do you think uh, attracted or, like, created a lot of the, the tough guys that were there, and uh, you know, MMA is not just punching, but martial arts, but is there, was there already like a martial arts scene, people studying martial arts there? Well, like the, our two main characters, are, they're both kind of Shotokan instructors, and, and the genesis of this whole idea was them going to these bars and just getting absolutely ripped on by these dudes in the bars who were, you know, steel workers, blue collar guys, but, you know, they're saying, that, that doesn't work, I'll kick the shit out of you, like, you know, and, and they just decided they were sick of being made fun of by these guys that just had beer muscles and, you know, really didn't know what they had trained for. And so they decided to put on these competitions in part to shut them up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And show that MMA or mixed martial arts is much more than it appears. Well, just martial arts in general, because nobody had respect for it, you know, in, in these blue collar areas. And I think Pittsburgh, a, a big part of our story, Henry said in the third act is like, you had so many guys out of work at this point. Um, they, were, they were trying to just earn a buck, too, at the same time. So some of these guys were doing it for pride. Some of these guys were just doing it for money. So it's a very fuzzy line. T tell him about Kono and what would he, he would do for side money. Oh, oh, he, oh one he, of our guys. Yeah, he, he wrestled a bear. Um, <laughs> I don't even think that makes it into the cut of the film. Like, there's stories. Like, one guy was on a nationwide manhunt uh, for, like, punching out a cop. Um, like there's crazy stuff that happened. Uh, what else? What are the other crazy anecdotes? Uh, one, uh, one of the referees, uh, Jaquay Bazemore was the, um, sparring partner for Muhammad Ali. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, American mentioned. gladiators. Um, you mentioned Jack Bodell, Jack Bodell, there. secret service for Jimmy Carter. Um, he has some funny little anecdotes about that. Um, 
But yeah, all these guys are just pretty much crazy and nuts. And Mafia got involved. Like, all will be revealed. Yeah, we were yeah. trying to fit 12 pounds of weird into like an eight pound bag. So. <laughs> All right, I think we have time for one more. Yeah, here we go. So I'm originally from Pittsburgh as well. Uh, my grandfather worked in a factory, and my dad part, worked in a factory. What part are you from? Uh, Beaver Falls. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so questions for the other guys that aren't from Pittsburgh. What's one of the major things that stood out about Pittsburgh to you, about the, the city itself and the people? The sandwiches. <laughs> well, Permani Brothers? Permani Brothers, yeah. we had. Um, it, it's... It's uh, like we filmed in Braddock. I don't know if you're familiar with that area. It's a little run down and on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. But yeah, and it's largely a section of America that's been forgotten. And like in, given the current political landscape of things, like these people are overlooked to a certain degree. Um, so the ability to film there, uh, you know, it, it revealed a lot to us. I mean, again, I told you we went to a douchey boarding school. So, you know, uh, like I remember we were flying drones over Braddock in particular, and some guy pulled a nine millimeter out of us cause, on us because he was, we were filming over his property. So he's like, get the fuck out of here. So, <laughs> really? There's a couple of them. We didn't even find one. Uh, yeah, no. One's well, still out there. Yeah. We have mentors yeah. for him if he'd like some fun. <laughs> Max. I'll tell him about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pittsburgh is definitely a main character in this movie, so uh, definitely check it out. It's so entertaining, and it's so eye-opening to MMA in general and what really went on. Um, it's on tomorrow night on Showtime at 9 p.m., right, guys? Yeah. Uh, we're so happy to have you here. Thanks for being here. Thank you guys for being here, too. <laughs> Watch Tough Guys. <laughs>